Yeah. The so-called Negro community has shot the white man by resisting all efforts to divide us. I think that you and I should continue to shock him by seeing and working together in unity. Despite religious, political, economic, or educational, or social differences, my people are terrified. We've been terrorized to the point that we're mentally and spiritually paralyzed. We suffered through centuries of dehumanization and degradation. It took the form of slavery and segregation in this land of the free, where oppression's government sanctioned. We're subjected to systemic skin color discrimination. From black codes to Jim Crow to black criminalization. It's been 400 years, it's time for our liberation We're a nation within a nation Victims of colonization Where's our revolution and independence They celebration Cause what's the 4th of July to the slave on the plantation And slavery didn't end, they just changed its implementation Just check the 13th Amendment Then you see why so many black males end up as guilty defendants The system isn't broken, it's working as it's intended so I'm not here to fix it, I'm here to end it. And then again, if we tell you that Negroes are being hung on the tree or being shot down illegally, unjustly, and those Negroes should do something to protect themselves, you say you're advocating violence. I won't rest till this nightmare we're living in ends and we see justice for our murdered young innocent men. If black lives really matter, black people need the proof. Cause we are the only ones responsible for our improvement How can we leave it to someone else to do what's best for us Especially when there's someone else has historically been oppressing us We can't use a system built to enslave us to free us And we really sick if we think that they white Jesus can heal us Our children need us to defend them, teach them and guide them Show them love and bring out the greatness that is deep inside them Are we gonna build a nation or stay on the plantation? Keep begging for our freedom or fight for our liberation. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, he didn't say get non-violent. He said, praise the Lord to pass the ammunition. We must be willing to die together or we'll definitely die separately. We desperately need unity if liberation is our destiny. If we don't know our history, then we doomed to repeat it. White supremacy is the enemy, but together we can defeat it. They stole us from the motherland, sold us into slavery, forced us to work for them. They got the nerve to call us lazy. In this caste system, we're outcasts, still treated as second class. But I can feel it in the air, revolutions in the forecast. We came for greatness, but they don't want us to know. So they hid our history to keep us under control. All it takes is to take a stand. The enemy's not invincible, but we must come together as one nation in the business. 20 million black people don't even know their own language. Why? Because he took it away from them. 20 million black people who don't even know the history of their ancestors. Why? Because he took it away from them. And if trying to tell them how thoroughly and completely they've been robbed, he says that he can hate them.
So family, I want you to take a good look at what you're seeing on your screen right here. Okay, now many of you will probably already knew that Jim Crow Joe withdrew his uh, financial support from our black farmers here in this country. Tax paying citizens of this nation who he has completely overlooked. They voted for him. And, and this brother here, as a lot of you all know, he's the president of the Black Farmers Association. And I want y'all to take a good look at the two screenshots I caught here of this article, right? All right, now the one on the left. National Black Farmers Association President Board releases official statement on President Biden's withdrawal of support for black farmers. Okay, now you see the date on that. August 9th, 2022. Okay, now you look at the one on the right. The United States announces 100 million Ukraine Agriculture Resilience Initiative. And you see it was dated July 19th, 2022. Okay. So now, right before, right before he canceled the funding for our black farmers out here, he sent $100 million to Ukraine's farmers. Now, United States citizens here, anti-black racist nation, but you're going to tell black people, black farmers, there's no money to support them. I want y'all to stop and understand what that's about. Okay. So for all you dumb Biden sexuals that's talking about, we got to give him time. We got to give him time. Look, every minute this man spends in office is designed to destroy the black American community. Realize the first thing that one of the main things that you have to do when you want to cripple a people, you have to stop them from being able to feed themselves. When we see things like this, of course, on the grassroots, we can get together and pool our money and try to help our brothers and sisters in any type of thing where they cut funding from it. But I'm going to tell you one thing that I'm getting sick of seeing. All these wealthy black celebrities, entertainers, athletes, when they see our brothers and sisters struggling or dealing with things like this, they should be the first ones to step up and pitch in. Too often, they see themselves as separate and apart from the issues of the black community until they want us to support them in their endeavors. Now, do we rely on them? No. But we're going to have to start coming up with a penalty for this because the men, they know about this stuff. They, they see this kind of, new, kind of news. When they see this kind of stuff going on, they should be quick to step in. Because like I said before, a lot of you have heard me say this many times. You got money to go in and throw 10 grand, 20 grand in a strip club, buying jewelry, buying expensive European crap. You got money to support your own people who you do turn to for support. We're we going to have to take a hard line against those in our community that do that. But further looking at this issue here, right? Okay. I want y'all to tell me right now, in realistic terms, not democratic talking points, tell me right now what reason does any black person have to vote for the Democratic Party again, whether it's the midterms or the national election in 2024? You see, I've often told y'all on this channel, if you wouldn't work for free, don't vote for free. You're going to have to get out of this thing where you think that we always supposed to go to the back of the line and they always telling black people where well, y'all just have to wait, wait for what? Wait for you to do nothing and then turn around after they do nothing for you. And you can clearly look and see what's being done economically for other groups. They'll turn right around and ask you to support them again. There is no excuse for this administration not to hold good on its promises that it made to black voters who did vote for him. Cause I didn't vote for the bastard. I don't, I don't vote for anything unless it's going to be tangibles in it for my people. Okay. And that's whether it's Republican or democratic party. And let me make this clear just because I'm criticizing the Democrats. That doesn't mean run and go vote Republican. Let me break this down. 
A lot of people have given their take on this, but you should always vote for black empowerment. So when it comes to people saying, well, we'll just vote for the Republicans and teach the Democrats to listen. Let me ask you something. Let's break this down from a logical standpoint. If you are trying to deter bad behavior, because that's what this is, okay? This is treacherous behavior. If you are trying to deter that, why would you turn around and go and run what people call a protest vote and vote for the Republicans if there's no tangibles on the table? You made that mistake putting Joe Biden in office. We got to get him in there. Then we'll, we'll, then we'll help y'all out. Just like he told Ice Cube that, okay, we'll talk to you after we after the election. That conversation never happened. So now, you better understand how the dominant society thinks. For those of you that are so stuck on this protest vote idea, let's analyze it. If you run your ass over there and vote for the Republicans out of spite, and with no tangible office on the table, no type of deal negotiating like, like you should have done with Joe Biden. We tried to tell y'all that in new black media. They're going to look at you like, uh-uh, niggas. You voted for them Democrats without them giving you anything. You going to vote for us the same way. Don't be stupid. If you do that, they're going to be, you're going to set a pattern for them of, of expecting you to do that from now on. They're going to do the same thing to you that the Democrats have done. So the smart thing for an intelligent black person to do is hold your vote. You don't go in to do business, which is what voting is, a business transaction. You don't go in to do business when there's nothing for your group on the table. Every other group understands that. See, you can't get the Asian, Hispanic, the Arab, East Indian, and you damn sure ain't going to get white people to vote for you if you don't give them anything in exchange for their vote. Now, my question to intelligent black people, because most of y'all over here are very intelligent that come to my channel. My question for intelligent black people is, how do you expect to keep doing the same thing and getting different results? We all know that's the definition of insanity. I get it. There are a generation, and I got to call them, even though it's not all, it's enough. The only generation that's going to vote blue, no matter who, or for the idiots that's going to run and go vote Republican without tangibles. I understand that, you know, there's a generation that they, they, it's too, it's too, they too far gone. They don't have any self-esteem. They don't think they're supposed to get anything. They just Democrat and white Jesus. That's it. That That's what they believe in. People keep telling you that you got to wait to get your heaven and they living there is right here on earth. We can't keep going like this. So for the people with some sense, you withhold your vote and you tell them, look, you can get my vote, but you're going to give me something in writing in exchange for it. Because see, this is what we're going to have to do to prevent things like this from happening. Right. Before it was get me in office. And then I, I'll, you know, make good on my promises. Never did it. So now the smart thing for black society to do when it comes to voting, you should say, if you want my vote, Democrat or Republican, you have to bring me proof of concept policies, meaning that before I cast my vote, you better come to me saying, hey, look, see this initiative we got going for black people. We'll expand this if you vote for us. We're going to have to start doing business like that because we cannot trust these parties. We cannot trust these parties, either one of them. They've proven that time and time again. So if they're not willing to do that, then you sit it out. Because, see, let's be clear. The, the Democrats will not win without black support. They can try to put all these illegals and form this, this little illegal immigrant coalition that they're trying to do. That's not going to work, and I'm going to tell you why. Because here's the problem. This is the, this is the conundrum they find themselves in. Asians, East Indians, Hispanics, okay, all of those different groups that come over here, they are classified as white. When they get here, they will play the game long enough to get what they need from the Democrats as far as getting over here and getting citizenship or what have you. And then as soon as they get that, they flip and vote Republican. They're not with all that goofiness that Democrats have going on. 
They're not with that that Rainbow Coalition agenda. They 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 don't support none of that foolishness. They're not supporting the deletion of children. They're not into that. So their values are going to align more in line with the conservative party, the GOP and the anti-black racism that is practiced on that side of the fence. Because let's be clear, Democrats and Republicans practice anti-black racism. We all know one has an overt strategy, the GOP, and the other has a covert strategy, the Democrats. And at this point, I got to go ahead and say that the Democrats have practiced overt anti-black racism towards black people as far as with their policies. They have been the most anti-black administration I have ever seen. And for those of us that understand Joe Biden's history, it's no surprise. He's just being Joe Biden. A lot of y'all sit up here, man, and look at this doddering, dim with it, don't know whether he's coming or going, old buffoon, Joe Biden, and you tend to think that, okay, oh, you feel sorry for him, Uncle Joe. Any black person running around here talking about some damn Uncle Joe, you need to be slapped upside your head, man. See, the man should have never got in office when he did one thing. The minute his old wrinkled alabaster ass jumped up on national TV and said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. If our people as a collective had the self-esteem that we would ha should have, that would have been the end of his campaign right there. That's one moment. The get your booty to the polls moment. That should have been another. Because, see, here's the thing. What they were trying to do, this is why that's so disrespectful. Because we got to break this down. The reason why that's so disrespectful because that's basically them trying to say, okay, well, if you want to get the black male vote, that's what all you need to do to, to appeal to them and just put some damn strippers up. Never mind that black men are about business, tangibles, economics, justice for our community. Oh, just just put some helpers up here shaking their ass. That, that'll do it. Now, there is a segment of our community that does apply to, but it's not the majority. It is not the majority by far. Man, understand something. Going back to the point about if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Take black out and say if you don't vote for me, you ain't Asian. You don't vote for me, you're not Hispanic. You don't vote for me, you're not East Indian. You don't vote for me, you're not Arabic. Okay? Or Middle Eastern. There is no Middle East, but hey, y'all, y'all don't get me started on that. But imagine saying that to those groups of people. They were like, oh, you going to tell us what we are based off a damn vote, white man? Even the ones classified as white, they, they don't like you talking about that culture that they try to hide when they come over here because see that that's another conversation right there about that kind of schizophrenia you know you're not a white person but you come over here and allow yourself to be classified as white and even fight for it historically lulac but you at the same time you're gonna say that you proud of it when you're ashamed of it that, that makes no sense that's schizophrenia but see they do it for political purposes so i do get it however it does bleed over into those people having severe identity crisis i've got some content coming up on my channel that's going a detail that i mean it's very sad but I, i'm gonna have to cover it i haven't seen nobody really break it down but dealing with this issue right here as far as us getting our tangibles brothers and sisters we can't sit up here and allow these people to play with us like this this is an insult in the face of every black american and for god's sake i wish the president of the national black farmers association would stop talking about people of color it ain't it look when it comes to black people, you better understand that no other group is pulling for us. We're going to have to get very hostile about anybody in our community of any age talking about some damn people of color when it comes to us getting what we need. Historically, you cannot show what that has ever worked out for us. This whole thing where, like, if we just say that we what we need for black people, it's got to be some type of backroom secret, a dirty word. We're not doing that. We're not doing that no more. So... If you do happen to find this video and you follow on this channel and you were one of the Biden sexuals, you see the mistake of your error. Now it's time to fall in line with the grassroots that have told your hard headed ass to withhold your vote. If you're not getting anything for it, especially in the national election, these midterms. Now, locally, that's where it counts. Determining who your sheriff is, your mayor, your judges, etc. Definitely vote for that. That definitely counts on the local level. 
But if you're not getting no tangibles when it comes to things on this scale right here, you be a fool to keep slitting your own throat. That's the equivalent of trees voting for the ax to chop them down. That's it, family. I want y'all to think on this. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you all in future content. Celebrate the foundational Black American culture of freedom fighting and resistance with the first annual Aretha Sussay 5K run. This cultural experience will honor our FBA ancestors and icons while harnessing energy from our past to power our future. There will be security at this event to ensure everyone has a safe and enjoyable experience. Aretha Sussay run is a cultural event for family and friends. Strollers and wheelchairs are welcome. The in-person event will include a free one-mile fun walk and will be held on December 17th in Tampa, Florida. Unable to make the live event? You can also participate virtually anywhere from December 17th to December 30th. All registered participants will receive the official Aretha Sussay Run finishing medal, t-shirt, and more with the ability to upload their race time to the official site. Live event participants will receive the time race scores, professional finisher photo, video, and your name will be announced as you're welcome across the finish line. Enjoy the post-race after party and review with a traditional FBA breakfast. You can also help us settle fun family debates like sugar or salt and grits. Prepare with family workouts and runs and post on social media using the hashtag Run. For registered info and sponsorship opportunities, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Click the link in the bio. Hope to see you all there.